Well, we're going to talk today about heaven's first aid kit. Now, when you open heaven's first aid kit, there is nothing in heaven's first aid kit that is empty. In fact, in heaven's first aid kit, there is a whole lot in here to treat a whole different variety of ailments. And how interesting is it that each one of us will run for the first aid kit when we get a cut? But do we run to him when we want to be healed? We have so much faith in a little first aid kit. How much more should we in the Holy Spirit? First aid kit came in handy this last week. It was the hardest hike of my life, which is kind of saying something. When you go down a trail and there's no trail and you got to make it, it's a hard hike. Over trees that were six foot in diameter, under trees, you get cut. And I went for the first aid kit. But then what I did, be healed in the name of Jesus. We have so much faith in America, in science and medicine. And I think, to be really honest with you and open with you, that sometimes gets in the way of what God wants to do. Are you saying we shouldn't go to the doctor? I'm going to get to that today, okay? But I want to start with victory, authority, power, responsibility that we've been talking about. The the gifts of the Holy Spirit are used for His glory, not our own. For His kingdom, not our own. Amen? And glory is actually tied to our responsibility. Romans 8, 17 says this, And if children heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. We have a responsibility. And we, we, we admit that if you see somebody that's injured, especially if you're a mom, you just don't let them bleed. You go and tend to their wounds. Amen? And I don't want this to be condemning in any way, but how often do we walk past people who are wounded and we don't tend to their wounds? The emotional healing that they need. And guys, and I'm not pointing anybody out right now, but I look out into the congregation, I know who needs prayer, and it's not a special word of knowledge. You're wearing it on your face. Everybody's like trying to cheer up a little bit, right? <laughs> but we walk past people who need healing, emotional, deep emotional healing. Maybe they need a change of mindset, and they've been so stuck in the same way of thinking. Anybody ever been there where you're just stuck in that same way of thinking, that old way of thinking? Just me, just the pastor has had that struggle. Come on. And, and, and you, you're confessing with your mouth stuff that's just not true. It's from the enemy. We need that mindset brought into alignment with the Lord. When we have a responsibility to do that, His glory is attached to our responsibility. We start walking and His glory falls. It's just the same as when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt He's doing his responsibility, and the glory of God is there. Amen? And I want to just, we need need to as a church, as Americans, (laughs) we have it so easy. Oh, my goodness. We have it so easy. We have hot showers Every day. And for those teenage boys, 
I'm looking at you right now. Every day. Spraying them down with axe after the hike. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, we have hot showers. We've got food. We have more than enough food in America. We do. We have all of these things, and we have become kind of soft, and we don't like to do hard things. I'm going to challenge everybody today. Go do, do a hard thing. This idea that the only easy day was yesterday, right? That kind of grates a little bit because we need to do hard things every day. Do the hard thing. The thing you don't want to do, that's probably the thing you're supposed to do. I'm going to say that again. That's probably a t-shirt. Come on, t-shirt folks, write it down. All right. All right. The thing you don't want to do, that's probably the thing you are supposed to do, right? Okay. There is, there is a sense and when you're, when you're walking through woods that is so dense that you, 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 you have to just get a little bit of a way through to make a way through, and it gets easier for everybody else behind you, and you do the hard thing, it's going to be easier for your family. Generations of Irish in my family could do two things very well. Drink and fight. Come on. Right? And it took, it took doing the hard thing. This stops in my generation. All the alcoholism, all the violence, it stops in my generation. The rage stops in my generation. Mine stops with me. Or, well, everybody else has done it. I've been out of it. I'm just going to keep doing the bad thing. What? I feel sorry for myself, so I'm going to do the bad thing. That makes a ton of sense. Right? Some of you need to resolve. It's okay that you're the generation where it stops. Amen? Amen? Be glad it's you. That your kids, your children don't have to walk through that. My grandfather was beaten with chains. Metal chains. Thank God my dad said enough. No more. Going out every night and drinking, my dad said, enough, no more. Then God said, the rest of it stops with you. All right, Lord, it stops with me. This connects to healing in this way. We have had generations of Christians who have allowed the devil to beat them about the head and the body, beat up their family, allow sickness to come in. I mean, my goodness, we had a pseudo-plague come into the nation. And the church as a whole was not loud enough, was not bold enough. Because we had the wrong mindset. We had a mindset that, well, it says in the scripture that God can heal. Yeah. Do we actually believe that? I want to tell you something. With On Fire here, I'm going to brag on the Lord. With On Fire here, you know how many people died of COVID here at On Fire? Zero. Steve Black, one came very close, but we are praying for you here in Jesus' name. <sighs> Preach it. And the, script, the scripture says, the plague will pass by your tent. This is the tent, the tabernacle of the living God here. Amen. The plague passes by. Whew. 
Whew. There is a, our, our family motto, okay? And there, there's a motto, and I hope some of you can read between the lines because I'm not going to spell this out totally. Veritas Omnia Vincula Vincent. It's the motto of the ISA, the Intelligence Support Activity. Most of you have never even heard of that. But our family motto is Vincent Veritas. It means this very simply, truth conquers. Truth is a person, Jesus Christ, amen? amen. So truth doesn't just conquer sometimes, on occasion, only in specific instances, truth conquers. That is literally our family motto for I don't know how many hundreds of years. Truth conquers because Jesus Christ conquers. He conquers all of the enemy. He conquers all alcoholism. He conquers all sexual immorality. He conquers all drug use and addiction. He conquers all rage and anger. He conquers all lust and control. He conquers all sickness and disease. Amen. Amen. But do we actually believe it? The scripture says it. So this brings us to this place. The knowledge of the truth conquers all and allows us to walk in victory and dominion. We have to know. That means we have to understand and accept the truth for it to conquer in our lives. Most people that have not received breakthrough don't actually accept the truth. They'll say they understand it. I can read it but they don't actually accept it in their lives. I was one of these people. I didn't accept it in my life. I walked for years with a disease until God healed me of that because I accepted the truth. Well, it says you conquer all, right? How many of you are sitting here today, right now, with something you've been struggling with for years? Well, we're gonna hit that head on, amen? So let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of... I'm sorry, could you say that again? Healing, Healing by the one Spirit... So what is healing? You ready for this? It is the healthcare system of the kingdom of God. It was universal too, by the way. It's free. Man. The enemy's always trying to counterfeit God, isn't he? It is the healthcare system of the kingdom of God. Healing is God's power through which people are made whole, either physically emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. It's all of it. God didn't die so part of us could be redeemed. Part of us healed. He died so we could be totally and completely healed. Amen? Amen. All right. So if God commanded us to do something like heal the sick, cast out demons, resurrect the dead, and cleanse the lepers. And he said, I'm commanding you to do it, but I'm giving you no power to do it. Wouldn't God be a deceiver? Here's the fact, and whether you would like to admit this or not, God has picked each one of us to be a healer. I remember, yeah, we're going to hit this. I remember somebody was talking to me, and I said, well, I'll just use the name Jim. What was his name? Well, Jim, please call me doctor. I've earned it. Well, please call me doctor representative. It's like, don't ever do that again. But my point was this. We could actually each call each other doctor in the kingdom. We could. Because the healing power of the Holy Spirit 
is inside and upon each one of us. Amen? So, turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, healer. Now, some of you are struggling with this. It's not you that's healing. It's God's power through you once again. But here's the thing. You're in your mind stuck. How could it possibly be me that God wants to use to heal people? Well, get that out of your mind. Amen? And if that's in your mind, then confess out loud, God, you want to use me to heal people, right? Because he commanded you to heal people. Amen? And God's not a liar. All right? So here's the thing. The Lord is longing to actually work through each one of us to heal people. He actually wants to. He's longing to do it. He is waiting for the opportunity to work through each one of us to heal somebody. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. He wants to do it. And guess what? He wants you, you, you to do it. We're his hands and feet, right? Oh, man. Are we? All right. So, everyone is called to heal the sick because it is part of the redemption of creation and taking dominion. We are heirs of creation. The enemy has screwed it up. The enemy has brought sickness in. I'll get to that here in a second. The enemy has screwed up creation. And so God said, I'm sending my son to reconcile you with me. And now you go into the world and you start bringing the world into alignment and redeeming the world and getting the enemy's hands off our bodies, getting the enemy's hands off our mentality, getting the enemy's hands off of our spiritual walk, getting the enemy's hands off our family and everything else in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what is God's vision for humanity? I want to ask this question honestly as Christians. And and I hope some of my Baptist brothers and sisters are watching online. I want to ask this question honestly. Is it God's vision for people to be sick and dying and missing limbs and deformed and barely breathing? Then why are we acting like that? Don't tell me God is a father who said, I'm going to break your arm, Reuben, to teach you a lesson. What kind of a dad would that be? Come on, guys, seriously. What kind of a father would that be? And yet the church acts like that's our father, and we wonder why we have a wrong view of God. He doesn't break your arm to teach you a lesson. God sees us each as a finished work. Finished work means complete, whole, perfect, beautiful. That was his vision in the Garden of Eden, was it not? Or did God say, let there be light? And then he started to create half animals and men missing feet. He said he looked at creation and it was all good. Check this out. All in Hebrew means the same as all in Greek. It was all good. But Matt, pastor, why? Why won't he heal me all the time? I want to just, I'm going I'm to be really bold with this statement. You ready? It is God's will to heal anyone of anything at any time. That will shake your faith up a little bit right there. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. If it's not God's will for you to be healed, why do you go to the doctor? Because you would be going against his will, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be in rebellion? Oh, come on. It got quiet in here. Wouldn't you be in rebellion? If it's his will for you to be healed... You go to the doctor because it's will for you to be healed because you're in agreement with him. Otherwise, why would you go to the doctor? So where does 
sickness and disease come from? I'm going to go through this very methodically, all right? There are five main things. There's many others, but I'm just going to stick with five today. First of all, sickness comes from the fall. When Adam fell, we began to devolve, not evolve. We began to forget that's where written language came from, and the archaeological record bears this out without question in history. When Adam was created, was Adam sick? No. So sin comes into the world. It's in our bodies. We begin to devolve. And by the way, this conclusively disproves the theory of evolution because you would have to have positive genetic code come in, but we see a continual degradation of genetic code over the generations. So, sickness came in because of the fall. So, when Jesus Christ comes back, we become glorified so our bodies, all is redeemed, right? Our bodies come back into that original alignment, that original position that Adam was in before the fall. Amen? Okay. The second place sickness comes from is the enemy. Maybe this is a newsflash. Fallen angels and demons take out their own bitterness on us. And there are spirits of sickness. The Jewish culture believed this unequivocally, but I want to point to a scripture, Luke chapter 13, verse 10. This may sound familiar to you. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And there was a woman who for 18 years had a sickness caused by a... And she was bent double... And could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your sickness. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made erect again and began. Oh, wait a minute. Glory is connected to responsibility again, isn't it? Praise the Lord. So this brings us to the third, the, the third cause. Sometimes we bring this stuff on ourselves. They have done studies on this where people will speak to a plant totally negative and the plant will die. They have done a study where they will speak well to the plant and the plant will live. Okay? Same thing with animals and the same thing with human beings. You start confessing over yourself, oh, I feel terrible. Oh, this is horrible. This hurts, that hurts, this is stiff, that's stiff. Ho, oh, oh, ho, this life is terrible, blah, blah. And you're whining all the time, and then it happens. Guess who brought it on? You, you have the power of life and death in your tongue. And by the way, just at the molecular level now, at the atomic level... The physicists are now saying everything looks like sound waves, almost like somebody spoke something into creation, huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord, okay? The fourth place the sickness comes in is our own poor decisions. If you, okay, and get, I'm going to say this with all love, all love, okay? And it started with me and Victoria, I love you and thank you for doing this. She would walk by and she would poke my belly and go, hee hee, like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Okay. Brad, I don't know about you, but it was a motivator to get in shape a little bit, okay? All right? Yeah. Our own poor decisions can bring on sickness. If we're overeating, if we're, if we're living a sexually immoral lifestyle, if we're smoking and using drugs and and having spiritual duplicity in our life, saying one thing at church and being a totally different person outside of church, you are inviting it in. Oh, I don't know why I need healing. Are you still smoking after 25 years? Stop doing that thing. I, 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 had, a, I had a sergeant. He was in Vietnam, and then he was a chaplain's assistant in Iraq. And this guy, that was his counseling to a lot of the young guys. He's like, that thing you're doing, stop doing that thing. Stop doing that. 
well, I don't know why I feel so terrible all the time. Because you're doing that. Look, if this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, we should take health seriously. And there's something called the Testament of the Patriarchs. Many of you have never even heard of this. It came out of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Where quite literally, the, the ancient fathers, I'm talking like Aaron, Abraham, get, get the idea. They wrote a last will and... Well, what was the testament? It was the testimony of their life and what God did in their life and their mistakes. They would read it at their funeral so that the next generation would not make the same mistakes they did. Would that we resurrect that tradition in Jesus' name. How, how wonderful that would be. Amen. So they, they also would include in the testimony health tips. Because God wants us to be healthy. Amen. Amen. He wants us to take, especially in Washington State, we need vitamin D3, right? That's what people say, all right? So he wants us to be healthy. So not only do our own poor decisions impact our health, but our own good decisions impact our health, amen? So another part of that that affects your health with poor decisions is profaning communion. This is in 1 Corinthians 11.30. And this was in Corinth where they would, and uh, if you got kids in the room, especially online, just they would have orgies and then they would have communion and they would do all these kind of things that were profaning communion. And then sickness came into the community and some died because of it. Well, yeah, don't do that, okay? Don't profane communion. In addition to that, sin, Psalm 38, verse 3, Psalm 107, verse 17 Sin comes in, and then sickness will come in on the heels of that as well. So we know some of the sins that bring that in, but it just makes sense. So again, our health is important, and our health is part of godly living. I'm going to say this again. Our health is part of godly living. saying I'm banned from ding-dongs. No. Yes? I'll bring back the most controversial line I've ever said, and I'll say it again. Soft drinks make you soft, okay? All right? Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, eliminate that from your life. Makes a world of difference. All right, but here's the point. If I have one Coca-Cola in a year, okay, one ding-dong in a year versus I'm having a ding-dong every day, Ding dong, here's your sign of why your health is deteriorating. <laughs> All right? That's going to be a t shirt, too. All right. <laughs> Here is the, the fifth way that sickness comes in, and it was God's judgment of wicked rulers. Miriam, Jehoram, Herod, Micah. 613 was the wealthy people in that city as judgment. Again, it was very rare that this happened, but sickness came in and it was a judgment on those people. All right. So what is our mission? Our mission is to follow the example of Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. So Jesus laid hands on people and prayed for them and they were all healed. Luke 4.40, you can look it up. Paul laid hands on the father of Publius, Acts 28.8, and he was healed. We are to lay hands on everyone, and as a sign when we lay hands on them, they will be healed. That's Mark 16.18. Sometimes we're supposed to pull someone aside privately and pray for them. Cal wonderful upstairs in the healing rooms. We pull them aside privately and we pray for them and they are healed. In Mark 7, 32 through 35, deaf, a man with, uh, that was deaf and had a speech impediment, Jesus just took him aside from the crowd, so all of the clamor and everything, took him aside from the crowd and healed him. Now this may shock you, but sometimes you are supposed to anoint with oil and pray healing over people. Amen? 
Sometimes through praise, Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. And I wish Elizabeth Hug was here right now. Because you can heal through joy. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but it literally translates this. I went and looked it up in, in the original Hebrew. It literally says this, a joyful heart causes good healing. That is the literal translation. So laugh some more. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and lastly, compassion motivates us to heal. Matthew 14, 14. When I walk by somebody who is wounded, I walk by them, and they are suffering, I should want to pray healing because I have compassion on them. Jesus walked by so many different people, and he had compassion. He had compassion on them, and he immediately prayed for them. Amen? So if you see somebody suffering or walking around with a scowl or whatever, guess what we're going to do? We're going to pray for them. There should be no one that leaves on fire ministries and walks out that door with a scowl on their face. Now, you're going to have some people try to run from you. And I've had it happen where I'm like, I'm zeroing in. I'm, going, I'm coming for you. They're like, they're like, what? They would rather run out the door than be healed. I can't believe it. But we want, to, we want to make it so everybody's praying for everybody. Amen? Because God said he called all of us to heal, not just the pastor. All right. Now we're going to get to the, the controversial stuff, right? What about the outcome? I prayed for them, but they weren't healed. Many, many are stuck here. It's really tough. We've all lost somebody we love. I held my dad's hand in the middle of the night as he was just he was struggling. I was praying for him. Praying peace, praying healing. All through the night, night after night. Praying for him. How come he wasn't healed? Lord, you see my heart. How come he wasn't healed? Right. Some people have lifelong ailments. How come they weren't healed? I've prayed. I've gone to the healing rooms. I've gone everywhere, and I don't seem to be healed. I'm going to say this. This is what I do know, that if you're arguing about the outcome, you're arguing with God. If I've done what he's commanded me to do, I've done what I was supposed to do. Now, I can still come into more alignment and step into more faith. Absolutely. But if I'm doing what I am, have been called to do, then I've done what I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to ask you this question. If you prayed for healing for somebody and they were healed, and we had that happen. We had, we had somebody having, literally having a stroke in there we prayed for them. They go to the hospital. They come out of the MRI totally and completely healed like that. Doctor was amazed, right? Now, am I going to walk around and go on my business card? <laughs> Please call me healer. I believe. No, nobody's going to do that. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Nobody's going to do that. You shouldn't. So listen to this and very carry this the rest of your life. If you're not going to take credit for the healing because it was God doing the healing... Why are you taking the blame? Pray in expectation. Right? And then we've done what we've been commanded to do. Amen? Here's the, here's the point with praying for healing. He wants us. He's reaching his hand out. He's like, I'm walking on water. Step out of the boat. Step out of the boat into what seems impossible and hold my hand. That's what's the most important to him in the whole process. That. Step out of the boat and hold my hand and walk into the impossible. Cal, have you, how, many, how many volumes of healing testimonies are here at the healing rooms? 500 volumes of healing testimonies all over the world. 500 volumes. Thank you for saying yes to the Lord. 
We honor that. Now, here is the other side of this. Okay. The person's amount of faith, amount of faith does not determine their healing. Lazarus had exactly that much faith in the tomb. Okay? He was dead, for those of you that don't know the story. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. When we say to somebody, well, the reason you're not healed is because you don't have a lot of faith. What does that do to somebody? Man, it crushes people doing that. And it, it didn't matter to Jesus. Jesus walked up to a whole bunch of people. He said, ye of little faith. He still healed those. <laughs> and he still said, your faith has made you well. What little of it's there. Because their faith was in him as the healer. So the amount of faith that the person has that you're praying for does not determine their healing. But this is the problem. The church will get afraid. Like, I don't want to pray for somebody and them not be healed. And so they don't pray for anybody. Well, of course nobody's going to be healed. Oh, my God. Hear, hear this again, please. If we don't pray for anybody to be healed, no one is going to be healed. And it is fear, which, by the way, I remember reading somewhere, is not from God. Fear is keeping the church for praying for people because they're afraid they're not going to be healed. That's not what God said. He said, pray for them, leave it up to me. So let's do that, amen? Okay. By the way, if one of our missions is to heal the sick and we're frozen from fulfilling our mission, think about that. The next piece is this, no accusations of hidden sin if they're not healed. I've seen somebody say, well, you've got hidden sin in your life. That's why you're not healed, sinner. How does that make people feel? And oh, by the way, Jesus healed a lot of sinners and very frequently did he do that. He walked up to people. Okay, so we don't walk around telling people, well, you must have some hidden sin. Jesus didn't have us make that determination. He said, pray for them and heal the sick. Amen? Okay, so common questions. Can somebody be healed in a moment by God? Yes, and he does and did in Scripture. And I want to give you a specific story of this. We were up in Radium Hot Springs up in Canada with Peggy Golden. We were preaching to a small church. We're at the Hot Springs because we're in Radium Hot Springs. Hello. Okay, so we're there at the Hot Springs. And we're sitting there. And this guy kind of keeps moving a little closer to us in the hot springs. And we're talking about God very openly in Canada. I don't know if they still do that. I presume they do. All right. And so he's moving a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And I'm like, I think this guy is kind of scooching in our conversation here. Let's keep talking about Jesus, right? So, so we're talking about Jesus. And he's there and... and all of a sudden, the Lord says, you need to pray healing for him, okay? That's a word of knowledge. So, Peggy gets up, walks over and says, do you have any pain in your body? Yeah. I mean, she didn't even finish her sentence. Yeah. Let's check this out. This guy drove from Woodby Island to Radium Hot Springs because God told him somebody would be there to heal him. So, this is, this is uh, growing Pastor Matt at the time. Peggy's like, put your hand on his knee and pray for him. It's like, me? Yeah, you. Right? So I kneel down in the hot springs. I put my hand on his knee and I say, in the name of Jesus, and his knee popped. I mean, loud. Went, pop. And he went, oh. He shook. I shook. Everybody was shaking. Looking down at his knee. And he's like, no way. I mean, no, watch this. 
He drove all the way from Whidbey Island to find the person there because he's following God's leading. And he's still having a hard time believing it just happened. Aren't we all kind of there, right? So his knee pops. He stands up and he starts dancing around and jumping and everything. Totally healed right in in an instant. Amen. So we walk into the shower afterwards. And he's standing there, not moving like this. I walk past him. I go, brother, are you all right? And he's like, dude, that was wild. (laughs) Praise God. In an instant, he can heal. But what happens when we pray for somebody and healing doesn't come? I want to give you three things here. Sometimes it's the timing of the testimony. But I want to quickly caveat this. We don't presume that somebody is not healed because of God's timing. Don't ever say that. Don't presume that. You don't know. But in the scripture, there's an example of this in John chapter 9, verse 1. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Sometimes, when we have a sickness, it brings out character issues in us. Victoria didn't know men were such babies when they got sick. So sometimes there are character issues that come out that God will deal with. He's not causing the sickness, but he will use that to bring out some things that he also needs to deal with in your heart. Amen. Paul is an example of that. And particularly emotional healing will come out in those times. But here's the point. We are all healed right now. I I love bold statements like that, Evan. We are all healed right now. Does it not say I am seated right now at the right hand with Jesus Christ in the heavenlies at this very moment? Does it not say that, that I'm healed? Or does God have folks limping into the throne room? I barely made it, Father, but I got in. We're in the throne room. We are healed. The manifestation in our body, that's what we're looking at, right? Amen? Amen. We are healed right now. So, when we pray, we leave the rest up to God. But in Matthew 8, 17, he was quoting Isaiah. And Jesus is this fulfillment. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities. Now, I want to be really clear here. Jesus Christ took our weakness, our illness, and all of our ailments. And then listen to this. And carried away our diseases. Different word in the Greek. That word for diseases, nosos, means incurable diseases as well. He covered everything and took it in Jesus' name. So, healing is taking dominion over the body. So we need to see in our mind that someone is healed. When that lady came up and touched the hem of the garment, she knew he was the answer, and she knew all she had to do was that, and she would be healed. She already saw it. She already saw it. I want you to close your eyes right now. What do you need to see in your life healed? Emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. What do you need to see healed? Healed. 